Welcome to this audio guide to the Los Vaqueros Watershed, sponsored by Save Mount Diablo, Thomas J. Long Foundation, and the Contra Costa Water District. At 20,000 acres, Los Vaqueros is just as big as its neighbor to the northwest, Mount Diablo State Park. But Los Vaqueros is newer and less well known. Some people come for picnicking and fishing, which are excellent, but we're going to go on a four to nine mile walk to learn about oaks, eagles, kit foxes, tiger salamanders, and red-legged frogs. We'll rise up to panoramas that naturally inspire talk of water policy and wind power, and we'll do our best to conjure up some ghosts of the past, including the 19th century Mexicans for whom this place was named Los Vaqueros, or the Cowboys. Your guides on this expedition will be people who know the area's natural and cultural history well. Seth Adams, Land Conservation Director at Save Mount Diablo. Marguerite Patil, Special Assistant to the General Manager of Contra Costa Water District, which built the dam and reservoir and now manages the watershed's lands. Mike Moran, a naturalist for the East Bay Regional Park District, who specializes in parks in eastern Contra Costa County. Malcolm Sproul, a biologist, birder, and expert in rare Bay Area animals. And Adrian Pretzelis, an archaeologist at Sonoma State University, who spent 10 years studying Los Vaqueros in the 1980s and 90s. Here's how Pretzelis feels about the place. It's sort of a microcosm of California history in many ways. So you can really get a human feeling for how it really worked, not what. Hollywood might have said it worked like, or like your fifth grade history textbook might have said it worked. It's very much a human story. Los Vaqueros also tells a big ecological story about grassland and woodland habitats. Because of the reservoir, you'll see shoreline species too, such as osprey, pelicans, herons, egrets, gulls, and maybe even bald eagles. We're entering the center of Central California here, where there's less moisture and higher temperatures than on the coast. Here's naturalist Mike Moran. The place changes not just climatologically, but the plant communities, the animal communities, the economies, the culture, the politics, everything changes there. And where everything changes is also where everything comes together. So I've always had this little thing about the Golden Gate being misnamed when John C. Fremont in the 1840s named the Golden Gate. He was looking the wrong direction. He should have looked east and seen where things really changed and opened up into this very different, very large California. And I think that when you're out there, when you see all these different things coming together, you can see the Sierra, you can see the coastal hills, you can put your foot in the Central Valley, put the other foot in the Delta, these four major landscape provinces, four of the nine that are in California, are all there within your daily experience. So, so much comes together there. Before we get started, you should know the water district's rules. No pets, no bikes on this route. Stick to the trails and stay out of the water, which may soon be coming to someone's tap. Our route starts at the marina near the watershed's southern boundary. The hike along the edge of Cowboy Cove is mostly flat with some steep up and down on Peninsula Ridge. If the day is hot or rainy, feel free to do fewer miles. You could, for example, head back after segment six for a total of four miles. For now, get comfortable at the marina for segment two.